This video explains what servo motors are and how they can be used on your model railway. Servo motors differ from the DC motors that power your locomotives. DC motors have two wires. One of voltage is connected to these wires the motor turns. The higher the voltage, the faster the motor turns. If the voltage is reversed, the motor turns in the opposite direction. This is perfect for a locomotive because you can control its speed and direction by varying the voltage. If you want to make a signal or move, you don't want a continuous rotation. What you need is a lever moving through a small angle and then stopping. This is what a servo motor does. Servo motors have three wires. Two wires supply power to the servo motor and the third wire tells the servo the angle to turn to. The servo motor contains a small DC motor that drives a number of gear wheels. These reduce the motor's movement. The final stage of the gears connects to the lever and to a potentiometer. This potentiometer measures the lever's angle. The servo motor's internal electronics compare the lever's angle with the requested angle. This causes the servo motor to adjust its lever until it is at the angle requested by the third wire. A circuit board is necessary to generate angle information for the servo motor's lever when a switch is thrown. Right, this is a single servo controller and it produces the signal for the servo motor and the power for the servo motor. On the servo motor there's a plug which just plugs into this board but you'll see on one side there's three holes and there's no holes on the other side. The side with the holes on goes towards the centre of the board. Now the wiring it, it needs 12 volts DC to power it or at least that works best. So the black wire is negative, the red wire is positive. You also need an on-off switch which makes the arm on the servo motor move from one position to the other. The on-off switch has got yellow wires. The 0 volt terminal is shared between the yellow and black wire and the other yellow wire goes into the S terminal. It doesn't matter which way around the yellow wires go. So when you throw the switch, the lever on the servo motor moves. Right, this uh, is a servo motor that we can take apart to see all the components inside it. It was just held together with four long bolts. So if you take it apart, you can see the gear train that reduces the movement. There's the little electric motor and all those gears reduce the mode, the movement considerably. If you pull this out, there's a little electronic board, a tiny one, and that compares the signal that you're putting in from one wire to tell the servo which position you want it to go to, with the measurement that the servo makes of the actual position it's at. And down there, you perhaps can see, is a potentiometer otherwise called a variable resistor. There's a little arm on there that moves as the last stage of the gearing moves. So that changes the resistance. So this board could compare the resistance of the signal it's getting in, the resistance telling it which angle it's moved to. So it's a very clever device and it allows it to always move to exactly the same angle. Because of the potentiometer inside the servo motor, the arm can only move a total of about 170 degrees because potentiometers only have a limited travel. So that means that when you're going to connect the arm to some model, you want to make sure that you've got the maximum amount of movement on either side of a middle position. Otherwise you might be trying to adjust it to somewhere where it won't go. Now to set the arm so that you know it's in the center position, all you need to do, there's three buttons here, one says speed and the other is to anti-clockwise and clockwise adjustments. So you just press the speed button, the red LED lights, and you wait. There you are, that's the middle position now. Now if that's not lined up quite right, it's just a matter of undoing that screw and then you can just take the lever off and put it on somewhere else. So now you've got that, you, you need to set the switches on. So you can set where you would like the arm to be when it's on. 
So let's say, it's, for example, connected to a signal. You've now got the signal with a linkage up to the signal, and the arm's now at danger. Now, if you can fiddle about till you've got it exactly where you want, once you've got it exactly where you want, you throw the switch. The switch makes it move back to the mid position, but it also remembers the last position in its memory. Now we make the other adjustment for the signal to be clear. So let's say that's the clear position. Throw the switch again, and it's remembered the two positions. Any time you want, you can readjust them. Let's make, make it move a fair bit. Throw the switch, it's remember the new position. Now when you turn the power off, put the power back on, those positions you set will be remembered. And the only other thing to think of really is the speed. Every time you press this button, the all moves a little bit faster. Uh, but after you've set it to really fast speed, it circles back to a slow speed. Now we're back to a really slow speed.